Hello, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Jessica Fritz, and I am part of the digital growth marketing team uh, for Scientific Games. Scientific Games is a 100% lottery-focused company, and I just wanted to say how excited I am to be here. I really do feel like I got the golden ticket to come to London. This is my first time here. My boss, Merv, who you might see you know, floating around on Facebook ads for Optimum, <laughs> um, wasn't able to come, uh, unfortunately, but lucky me, I, I got to come instead. So I just um, have really enjoyed being here and uh, learning alongside um, and from all of you. Uh, and I hope that um, you can take away something uh, a little insightful from what I have to share with you today. So uh, the plan here is to kind of give you an overview of the lottery industry, a little bit of information about scientific games, um, and then talk about our partnership with Optimo. And then we'll kind of dig into a really cool project that we worked on um, that we completed at the end of this year. So... I thought it would be um, a good idea to put kind of a SWOT analysis together to give you a kind of a framework to, to think, you know, from a, the lottery's perspective or the industry's perspective. And obviously, these items here are things that scientific games as well as our partners help solve for. So with lotteries in general, um, they have a strong brand equity, you know. Um, they have an established business model at, uh, in a retail footprint. Um, it's a recognizable brand, and you do have a lot of very loyal players. However, there's always room to grow. Um, like I said, a large foot, uh, retail footprint. Um, so products are sold in stores in every neighborhood, in bars and restaurants. Um, that's really, uh, you know, allowing uh, local businesses to get commissions for lottery sales. Um, and something that's kind of unique to lottery is that we have billion dollar jackpots and you know that drives a lot of excitement um, and a lot of uh, organic acquisition as word of mouth um, type of, of awareness. So those you know generate a lot of new acquisitions for us online as well. Um, weaknesses I kind of see and I, maybe most of you um, are dealing with some type of, you know, strict security and compliance protocols, obviously with what we do. Um, but I feel like lotteries have it a little bit different. There are layers and layers of review and legal review that can sometimes take, you know, really long time, um, you know, for technology advances and even, even products themselves. Data management is another weakness. You know, you have a lot of different systems competing with each other, or, or not competing with each other, but not, not interconnected. Um, so that makes, uh, you know, getting that data into, um, into your CRM platform difficult. Uh, and then I think from a player's perspective, there's really a lack of awareness of where the money actually goes. Um, many players don't understand that it goes, uh, well, the, the, majority of pro or the majority of the revenue goes to prizes for players, but the second largest portion goes to, um, you know, benefit state programs like public education in Michigan or, um, you know, parks and recreation in Colorado. Uh, senior citizens programs, those kinds of things. Most people aren't really aware of that. Um, and for opportunities, really, you know, what scientific games and the industry has been kind of driving home in conferences at industry uh, conferences a lot lately is known player accounts. There's a lot of lotteries that are hesitant to um, really adopt the, the tech stacks that they need in order to have known player accounts. Um, you know, for much of the lottery's history, it, it's, you know, the, and the largest part of the business is driven by uh, purchases at retail. So this wasn't always seen as a need, but more and more it's becoming a need now that we have tools like Optimove where we can prove its effectiveness. Um, 
So, uh, you know, lotteries are still looking to have a good 360 view, view of their players, both online and offline. Um, another thing that's somewhat new to the lottery industry is cashless payment methods. Um, you know, many lotteries um, have yet adopted that form of technology and are, it's not widely used. Um, so that's definitely an opportunity that we see. Um, and then another opportunity that I've been really working on um, you know, with my focus at Scientific Games has been to really benchmark and have uh, lotteries come together to, um, you know, collaborate uh, on different uh, strategies and, you know, talk about their, their roadmaps and things like that because lotteries aren't in direct competition with each other. So we even have some competitor vendors on the, on the call sometimes. But, you know, it's a very sharing uh, group of people. So that's definitely an opportunity and something we want to try to continue to, um, to nurture. Threats, uh, and, and I put this one at the top because it's one of the biggest, <laughs> um, but modest marketing and advertising budgets, and usually these budgets are decided upon outside of the lottery. Um, obviously, lottery leadership has some um, justification into the, the people who decide what the budgets will be, but in comparison to other forms of entertainment, it's usually pretty modest. Um, Heightened responsible gaming accordance, and this one makes sense because, you know, they're an agency, a government agency, so um, I think, you know, they're under a lot more uh, refined microscope than maybe some other industries. Uh, and of course, regulatory restrictions, uh, and this can limit everything from marketing strategies and promotional capabilities. So those are just a few things that I thought would set a good framework for the rest of the conversation today. And then a little bit about SG. So we offer printed and digital games, um, engagement programs, web and mobile products, uh, we've launched over 900 websites, 15 million mobile app installs. We work with 32 iLotteries uh, programs across the world um, for our Pennsylvania partners specifically, to give you an idea. Um, there was 109 million in iLottery wagers last year. Uh, we manage eight loyalty programs and two second chance pr promotion programs. And in those uh, loyalty programs, uh, uh, to date, $9.3 billion in tickets entered into the loyalty program. So very successful. And we offer a wide range of expertise from product development to analytics and uh, research to marketing and loyalty program support. And my team specifically, the growth marketing team, specializes in helping iLotteries really optimize their businesses and programs online. Um, what's new to the industry really is um, going back to the known player accounts, just having this data on our players um, and you know, using that to really drive the most personalized messaging that you possibly can. Um, and now we're having, you know, we're seeing more uh, data than we've ever seen before. Uh, we have three jurisdictions that are selling products online as well, so we um, try to you know, uh, utilize that data as much as we can to inform our marketing. So we have a large team of product owners and CRM strategists that manage our lottery partners, and we offer everything from just a strategic consulting all the way to full program execution. Um, we started working with Optimove in April of 2018, and since then we've launched 12 of the state lottery programs with Optimove. Um, and I wanted to call out our, our customer success team, John Schaeffler and Nardeep. You know, they work with us on our day-to-day, -day and they really are a part of our team. We also take advantage of the strategic services, so we get to work closely with Dana Rausch and Dean Zucani. And, you know, they really help support us on the, the data side. <clears throat> uh, 
And, you know, our, you know, with the support of these teams, we really look to implement as many of the new features as we possibly can um, that Optimove provides each year. So in order to keep up with these innovations with some of the challenges that I have mentioned, um, we created a format or a um, division of our, of our company called SG Digital Academy, and this was formed to kind of give our lottery partners a forum to try new technologies and learn from one another in an effort to optimize their marketing programs. The first SG Academy <clears throat> was kicked off last April in partnership with Optimove and Meta. And over the next few slides, um, I will highlight and get into some really specific case studies to give you an idea of what that project was all about. So we partnered with Optimove and Meta. It was a six-month medium buying project uh, with five state lotteries to optimize my paid social media campaigns, um, and this was uh, to allow customized data-driven strategies. The project was focused on building long-term impactful marketing programs um, using the player data directly from the Optimove Meta platform integration. Uh, each lottery had their own unique digital strategies, diverse product offerings, uh, various different budgets, and to be honest, when we started this project, um, you know, this was kind of Merv's uh, idea, and um, he brought it to myself and uh, my player acquisition manager, Lindsay Torres, who really was the glue for this project. And you're, uh, we were like, you want us to do what? And what amount of time? Um, with how many lotteries? So, you know, there definitely were some challenges here, but, you know, we just uh, pushed on and we saw some really, really great results. So we organized this project into three separate phases, measurement or the development piece, planning, and then execution. Uh, for measurement, we implemented the Meta Conversion API, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, but we also set up event tracking uh, using uh, Meta Ads or Google Tag Manager, depending on the lottery. And then finally, we set up the Optimove uh, Meta integration for those that didn't already have it. Um, I believe there was only one lottery that did, did have it already. So from there, we went into the planning phase um, where we hosted discovery workshops, uh, each lottery, uh, with each lottery to do a deeper dive, we did a market analysis um, of the lottery, and we analyzed their player data just as, you know, to give us a framework. Um, and then, you know, this really helped us identify some testing opportunities and create some, some roadmaps to work from. So, um, we also worked with Optimove and Meta Strategic Services on the necessary training and hosted some digital workshops around best practices for creative, ad placement, messaging uh, with Meta, just to make sure that we were giving this, this project the best um, chance for success. And then the last phase was the execution phase. Uh, this was where we collectively made decisions around which segments we were going to use. Um, you know, most lotteries started out with acquisition. I think they were really excited about the idea of using high value or certain segments of players to really create and build custom lists on Facebook. Um, and so most of them started with an acquisition type ad set and then moved into retention. So for the meta conversion API, before any testing was conducted, uh, we worked with each lottery to implement uh, this API. And this was a recommendation from meta uh, to align with their best practices. And it's meant to create a more reliable connection between your marketing data and uh, the meta technologies. Um, so what does this do? This helps optimize ad targeting, decrease costs per action, and overall improve tracking. So that was something we definitely wanted to get right with all of the lotteries. Um, and then the Optimove integration. Uh, the nice thing here is that the audiences were automatically updated every day. 
um, that ensured that players were going and seeing the, the correct advertising that they needed to be seeing, depending on where they were at in the life cycle. Um, and of course, this integration made sure that, you know, and this was a big thing for the lotteries, because again, going back to uh, one of the challenges on the security side is, um, you know, with the integration, the data was ha hashed, and, you know, that way it was, it was protected. So results. <laughs> um, this is kind of a collective view of some of the results that we saw with the, the project. And we can definitely say that there was up to a 20% higher uh, reach, um, up to a 31% more registrations, and up to a 60% lower cost per result. Um, and we were really all excited about uh, every, every time that a um, that an ad set or a test completed and we got to see the initial result, results, we were really excited about it. It just, you know, was a constant loop of, you know, coming in from different lotteries, just, just great results. So we were really, really happy with that. But let's dive into a little more detail here and show you some samples. So this was Arkansas. And Arkansas did both an acquisition and retention test. And they focused on players who um, had purchased one and $2 tickets in the last 180 days. So there was about a list size of, of 37,000 or so players in, in their system they were trying to find, um, find matches for on Meta. And then um, the, the results here, we saw a 4% increase in registrations. 9% rise in average value, future value, and then on the retention side, a 3% increase in ticket purchases, and this translated into about 31,000 additional tickets um, uplift. So, you know, really positive impact. And um, a lot of lotteries don't invest a lot in their paid media. A, a lot, well, a lot of lotteries think that they, they don't need to invest in paid media uh, until they have online um, online offerings, but that's just not the case. I mean, this is definitely a case study that proves that your, um, your media is definitely gonna sell at retail as well. And for Kentucky, uh, this is a lot, or, or sorry, Zoe Ewell. She's the media marketing manager at the Kentucky Lottery, and uh, we asked her to share her experience with uh, this collaboration, and so I'll play this short video for you. Hi, I'm Zoe Yule, Manager of Media and Advertising at the Kentucky Lottery. We were privileged to participate in Scientific Games Metapilot, which provided us with the opportunity to test the effectiveness of lookalike audiences for acquisition purposes. In our test, lookalike audiences based on high value player segments in our Optimove CRM platform and a broader interest control group were targeted with acquisition offers resulting in a 31% increase in player registrations, accompanied by substantial enhancements in purchases, reach, and ad engagements. These results were instrumental in refining our acquisition strategy and empowering us to leverage other high value player segments across other initiatives. Beyond the insights garnered from the pilot, Scientific Games played a pivotal role in helping us transition our social media ad accounts in-house and connecting us directly with Meta. It's always nice to get testimonials and, and feedback from your partners, your customers. So glad we could include that. Uh, next, we're going to talk about Washington. And uh, Washington is a loyalty-only state uh, who participated in the project. This is a quick vid video from senior media planner Gina Neese with Wonderson Thompson. So this is Washington Lottery's agency partner. Um, not sure if I really covered that, but um, the scope of the project uh, had us working, you know, not only with Optimove and Meta, but also the lotteries and their agency partners. So. There was uh, quite a bit of collaboration, and um, it, it proved successful. So hopefully this one plays as well. 
Hello, I'm Gina, a senior media planner with the Washington State Lottery. Our collaboration with Scientific Games and their Optimove CRM system has been a game changer in targeting high value players and refining our understanding of our player user journey. This partnership proved especially valuable when our city of Seattle had the honor of hosting the annual MLB All-Star Game this past summer. Our partnership with MLB to feature our Hit 5 game was not only exciting, but proof of the effectiveness of Optimove in enhancing our campaign strategies. Optimove enabled us to construct a detailed user journey appealing to potential players through lookalike audiences based on our existing Hit 5 players. We engaged prospective audiences with educational content about the game while tailoring our approach to past purchasers with specific Hit 5 ticket information. This strategy yielded impressive results, a nearly 15% boost in engagement rates for our target audience. More notably, we observed significant increases in ad recall lift, click-through rates, and the duration of time spent on our educational landing page, especially by previous buyers. These insights were significant in enabling us to refine our approach for both current and prospective players. The support from Optimove not only enhanced our understanding of audience engagement, but has helped us shape the way we design our user journeys setting a new standard for future campaigns. So another great testimonial. It, it was really helpful to have, you know, um, partners from the lottery side and the agency side. That way we could kind of problem shoot across participants. Um, and we found that really helpful. And uh, Gina was a huge help there. Okay, so this is the last case study. Um, this is the Pennsylvania Lottery, which is a real money gaming, or uh, we call iLottery State. Um, and they did both an acquisition and a retention test. So the test group um, that we used uh, for this particular test was a high value player segment. So we do have, uh, I think there are six value segments. We used the three highest to find our, our uh, most valuable players and composed um, a list for uh, Meta to put out there to find similar players um, utilizing the welcome offer uh, featuring one of the progressive jackpot games. Um, so this test group showed a 60% lower cost per first time deposit and a 42% higher conversion rate compared to the control group. So um, they had been running a welcome offer series and it had pretty much stayed the same. Um, you know, and this was the, the first uh, test that we ran, proved really, really successful. So they picked that up and kept that going. Uh, the retention test, again, we used that same segment, but we wanted to test creative. So this was a little different. We had already proven out um, the acquisition piece, so we just wanted to, you know, see what we could do on the retention side with our current players. Um, and we, we used uh, the, the current ad set, which is was generally uh, like a mix of different messages um, and creative stock photography, but we wanted to create something that looked uh, kind of luxe, you know, or more like a VIP. So here, um, this showed an oppressive 10% increase. Um, the average deposit amount associated with the VIP creative outperformed general creative by 19%. Um, it revealed a 13% higher future value um, and a substantial 34% boost in total wager amount. So even uh, add ad that did not have an offer directly on it was able to really perform uh, with the lottery. So these are just a few of the case studies uh, that we put together. I know the hope for the Digital Academy is to continue to try new technologies, uh, new things with lotteries. Um, and uh, just in, in closing, I, you know, kind of going back to there were, you know, quite a few challenges with this pro project, but um, yesterday Neil really drove home a good point for me. And I think, you know, in relation 
to this project, uh, don't let perfection stand in the way of progress. You know, we were really concerned about the time, the amount of people that we had to collaborate with, um, all of the different uh, things that were gonna, you know, need to be organized. But really, um, we just pushed through and we definitely saw results. Um, and I just kind of wanted to close with, I know I've been asked the question a few times, like, what is your favorite part about this conference so far? And, you know, I'm trying to think of all of the things that I've learned and, you know, listened to over the few days. But I think the answer is really simple because I, I feel it's the people. Um, definitely getting to be connected and in person with all of you and with the Optimove team, I feel is, is so important. So um, I did sign up for the Opti Circle, and hopefully once that's up and running, we can uh, get a discussion board going. If you have any questions about this project or anything to do with the lottery industry, please feel free to, to find me. And uh, thank you so much for uh, being here with me today, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference.